is pleased to join you from the always raucous Cleveland Brown Stadium in downtown Cleveland, Ohio. But tonight on this fine Thursday night, we've got a good one in store as it'll be the New York Jets taking on the Cleveland Browns. when started and off we go from Cleveland and he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26 yard line so here come the Browns for their first drive on offense they'll be led out by their veteran quarterback a former blue hen out of Delaware it's Joe Flacco remember when the conversation was is Joe Flacco elite well, at one point, he was a lead enough to not only win a Super Bowl, but be named the MVP of that game. And for a time, one of the top paid quarterbacks in the league. Not bad for a young man who transferred to Delaware from Pitt while in college. This guy has had a great career, not many chances now to lead an offense, but still capable if put on the field. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion. Flacco to throw again on second down. And the Jets pressure too much as down he goes. John Franklin Myers, the one in there to drop him. All right, partner, I'm going to be Captain Obvious right here. Not the start you're looking for offensively, right? Incomplete pass followed by a sack. And when he went down, it looked like that right ankle got turned, but thankfully he popped up okay, and they breathed a sigh of relief on that sideline. And I don't think this is the script they had in mind for their opening drive. This is third and long. From the gun, Flacco. This complete to David Bell. And he is out of bounds right around the 34. Give him 19 on the play, but they will still come up a bit short. And now it's fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. On fourth down, on is Corey Bohorquez to punt. It's a 48-yard punt with a coverage holding him to three on the return. And the Jets will take over first and 10. 
So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. They're led out by a former number two overall pick in the draft from BYU at Zach Wilson. And we all know the scouting report on him. He can attack the field at all levels with a very strong arm and make big time plays off schedule. We also see a player with confidence and swagger. We see a guy who knows how to lead a team, who knows how to compete, and wants to be great every time he hits the field. It'll go as a gain of four, and it's second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. From the 21, here's second and six. First carry for the Iowa State man, Brees Hall. And only a couple there up to about the 23-yard line. How about the big guy there showing some agility? He just float from his D-tackle position in order to make that play. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Wilson. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Jets first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. First down, Wilson. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And I think the Browns got it. They did. So holding on the offense, they go ahead and decline the penalty, and the ball will change hands on the fumble recovery. Passing play, Flacco. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. Second down, Flacco now. To the right side, he's got Cooper, it's complete. First time that they called his number tonight and it gets him a first down. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets him a three and out, two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together, just what you described. Get them the ball, give them a little momentum, and they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Now Flacco. He's got Njoku, his big tight end. He'll go down as a gain of six, and it's second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he could break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Here now, second and four. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the nine yard line. And he got half of what he needed there, two yards, and it'll bring up a third and two more. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is gonna do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. The Jets will bring in a nickel set here as they try to stop this third down. Here's Flacco. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one, closed quickly, and helped force the incompletion.
The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. They'll try and run for it. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. They're able to keep the drive alive seven yards that time, and the decision to go for it proves to be a good one. Didn't get the touchdown, but a big first down, and now they're six feet away from the end zone. And a little bit of momentum as well to get down to the two-yard line, first and goal. Playbook's open now, right? What do you want to call? You want to call power? You want to call quarterback run game? Do you want to throw the ball? The entire playbook is available for the play caller. Oh, and this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Now they get in there and knock another one away. You think maybe that tuck rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder? Yes, indeed. That time, lucky that the arm was going forward. Incomplete pass. They hand off to their big tight end. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. You got to be ready for anything when you play defense against this head coach. That is not something you'd expect to see here in the red zone, but it winds up getting them a few yards. Now, they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. Ford is in. Touchdown, Cleveland. So the second down run didn't work. They run it again on third down and get in. I wasn't sure if they might pass it, Charles. We know that they like to mix it up down here around the goal line. Yeah, almost felt like the offensive line said, forget mixing it up. Let's call our favorite running play over our best blockers, and let's get this one in. Justin Hopkins on now to add the extra point. It's up and through to make it 7-0 Browns. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it's capped off by the Browns touchdown. Touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. Xavier Gibson now from his end zone. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Back onto the field come the New York Jets for their second drive. They had to fumble on the last drive, wound up leading to the opening touchdown. Now they'll try again here, first and 10. They'll start on the ground. Hall, he'll get a yard. That's all as they get him down at the 28. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. What I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's second and nine. On second down, a run with Hall. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That's good for a Jet first down, a gain of 13. Well, CD a lot of times like to separate speed and quickness, and they've got a back that's both. We know that he's fast in the open field, but, man, his first step is so quick, too. It is something, isn't it? Because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning up field, but also when you run those inside runs, he can get into the secondary so fast, the linebackers don't have a chance to react. Yeah, 
A Banacanda on first and 10. And he'll be pretty well stopped in his tracks. Give him a yard up to the 42. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Now here's a little touch pass as they tap it quickly to their receiver. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. And a lot of times these plays, they either go for nothing or they go for big yardage. And here they got to the outside, turned it upfield, and ended up getting a nice little gain out of it. They'll come up now, third and three. To throw is Wilson. This pass out wide to Hall. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. So just three yards on the completion there. And that'll bring up fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Walked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? Now here's Morstead now as he sends this one away. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. The Browns offense trotting back onto the field. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football as well as they start out first and 10. They'll try and start this drive in the air. That to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. And that's the knowledge you gain from being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. Second and 10. They'll look to throw. That's complete. It's Elijah Moore. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 13 yards on his first catch. It's a first down as well. So what do you do if you've got a defense in cover three trying to keep everything in front of them? The answer seems obvious. Just work those routes in front of them. This is going to be a hitch route, but he's operating in plenty of space, and he makes the catch here for a first down. On first down, Ford knifes his way forward here, but just three yards on the play, second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field. I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. On second down, Flacco to throw. In a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, C.J. Mosley. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six and a jet touchdown. Well, it turns out it's not their offense who gets him on the board first, C.D. It's the defense coming through right there with a pick six. And I know from experience throughout the week when you go against the offense, you're challenging them all the time. You're letting them know, hey, don't worry about scoring this week. We'll take care of it. We'll get a few pick sixes and score ourselves. You're just kidding, but how about what he just did right there? Laid it out for the rest of the game. We scored. Hey, offense, can you keep up with us? Zerline connects on the extra point, and we are tied at seven. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. 
Now the Browns offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, I and got his man complete. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. 33 yards that time. We always talk about the guy who paid off the play, don't we? Guy who caught it or ran it. But how about the elements that go into making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field, pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route well run, and the football right on the money. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Setting up to throw, Flacco tries the right side, and he finds Bell. the 36 now here's second and five now a handoff up the middle it's Ford and he'll be brought down at the 27 yard line now what a first down pickup of eight yeah once more strong running excellent blocking at the point of attack they've got a nice little drive brewing right here back to him on first down and he is going to lose yardage here Quinn and Williams so hard to block and he shows it that time making the tackle for loss the running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half and I don't think it's all been his fault his offensive line hasn't given him much space a loss results there After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. They run the counter. Four. And he'll take this inside the 30 to about the 29, maybe the 28-yard line. Give him two yards that time, and it's going to leave him with a third and 11 situation. He did have the touchdown run earlier, but not a heck of a lot more than that throughout this game. No, not at all. In fact, I would say that this defense has done as good of a job on him as they have on any runner in recent memory. Third down. Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. And it's intercepted at the goal line. And the Jets are going to take possession here. It's a touchback. And they'll take over at the 20-yard line. Well, your first drive of the first quarter, you get it down there, try to fire it in the end zone, and big-time deflation on that play. No doubt about it. They're moving and grooving and getting into position, and this is not the ending that they saw on this drive, is it? They had things going their way. The New York set to take the field. And it's been a rocky start for them thus far. They had the turnover and then the punt on those first two drives. So there is optimism because they've improved, right? <laughs> turnover, you just noted it punt's on the first better. drive. Punt's better than the turnover. The punt is better on the second one. Now they're hoping to turn it into first downs and hopefully points. Meanwhile, Wilson's throw here pulled in by Lazard. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down. Executed it to perfection. On the counter, it's Hall. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, 
He realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. Throwing is Wilson. Over the middle complete. That's Wilson. A first catch there for Wilson and a first down. These two teams all tied after one. The Jets with the football here to start the second quarter as they've got it with a first and ten. Here's Wilson to throw. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Now a second and ten. Straight ahead is Hall. And he's going to take this across the 50 into Brown's territory. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Well, this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and ten. Nice run on second and ten when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. Wilson now to throw on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. Like what I see so far out of this defense because they've been showing their best coverages on third down. So far, only allowed one conversion on a handful of attempts. One area of their game plan that they've executed to perfection. Here's Thomas Morstead on now to punt it away on fourth down. And this one hits at the three and then bounces into the end zone for a touchback. Cleveland offense making their way out. And two interceptions already here in this first half. That's got to affect him a little bit, right? He's got to be thinking about it. He's got to be thinking about it, but most of the good ones, they find a way to put it aside. They're not happy about it by any stretch of the imagination. They find a way to put it aside and continue to play their game. Can he put it aside? Let's find out. No gain on the play there. Second down. So if you've been playing defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good and some bad because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier but shut him down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. Flacco here on second down. To the right side, and he's got more complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The previous play, they barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Now they pick up over 30 yards. Oftentimes, now offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just help receivers find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air, nice chunk of yardage there, and then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Now a give right side. It's Ford brought down, but after we saw a flashy little move, stopped short of the 40. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Again, they turn to Ford, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. This defense has really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going.
The offense on third down tonight, they've only converted once in four tries. This is third and four. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. And they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Flacco. Wide open, Amari Cooper. And they move this all the way down to the nine. That one goes for 24 yards. Great mix of play calling so far. Three runs, three passes. All three passes have been completions. First and goal. I think on defense now, you have to almost take a chance. Rely on your scouting. Pick a play you think they would run here and just load up for it and see what happens. Here's Flacco. Finding Njoku along the sideline. So he stopped for no gain. And that'll make it second and goal. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. The handoff to Ford up the middle. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Jerome Ford with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Browns have taken the lead. So his strong first half continues as he finds the end zone here for the second time. And definitely good blocking at the point of attack. And you just have to love watching the way he can create space down near the goal line. And he's able to take it into the end zone. Hopkins now for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So an eight-play drive covering 80 yards. And the capper that put it in the end zone, a run of eight yards. Touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. So out now come the Jets. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. Wilson. He finds Randall Cobb with a completion. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. On second down, here's Wilson. They'll set up the screen for Hall. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. In order for a screen pass to break big, a lot of things have to come together and be well executed. But all it takes is one small thing to go wrong and keep it from being a big game. On first and 10, it's Hall. Yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. 
That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. From midfield now, here's Wilson. He'll find Lazard here over the middle. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 39. 11 yards there as they connect on the quick slant. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Paul on to give up the middle. On the tackle that time, Shelby Harris. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. Here's a second and five. On the handoff, a Banacanda. And he'll follow his blockers there all the way down to the 23-yard line. It'll go as a gain of 11 and a Jets first down. Pardon, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get them. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. Throw on first down with Wilson. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Here's second and ten. Now Wilson. Got a man. That's Lazard. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. Now they'll have it first and goal following that gain of 17. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. Now it's Wilson. Yeah, he'll find Hall. And he's brought down right at the five-yard line. Give him two on the play. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. The give now to Abana Kanda. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal from the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? Something quick hitting. You don't have the time for something that develops slowly. It's got to be right at them if you're going to run the football. And if you're going to throw it, something quick, get it out of your hands in a hurry. Again, a band of Kanda. And he is in. Touchdown, New York. Israel Abanacanda taking it in from two yards out. And the Jets are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. But just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in have to report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. The zero line now for the PAT. Yeah. 
And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. So that one a long 11 play drive. And it's culminated by a two yard touchdown run. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. He'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through, but that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. The offense on third down tonight, two for five to this point. This time it's third and three. This is Ford. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. That's how you get right up off of the map, because on the last play, they stoned him in the backfield and dropped him for a loss. But he's the type of guy that scared me a little bit because he's not daunted. Just got right back up, showed some confidence, and picked up a first down with his very next run. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. On the ground, it's Ford. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. To pass, Flacco. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. They certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Flacco. And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. And a huge return as he'll take this one all the way down inside the 30-yard line. Three first-half interceptions now, and Charles, you'd have to think a fair amount of concern is developing over there on that sideline. And there should be, because essentially he's been a little loose and possibly reckless with the football here in the first half. Now, maybe it's not all on him, but still three interceptions. That puts the entire team in jeopardy. So the play caller from here on out, Got to design some throws for him that he can complete, keep it away from the defense, and try and get him back on track. 
After the interception, here's Wilson. This will be caught inside the 10. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the 8-yard line. Wilson. And that's going to be knocked away in the end zone. It's incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. Here's Wilson. Being chased out, and he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. More than one defender there, and that's a loss of five on the sack. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football, had to eat it, and ended up on the ground. goal and still a long way from the end zone they'll try to run it here with Hall and he goes backwards here losing yardage back to the 16 now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next So Wilson runs off, and now they will go to the man they call Greg the Leg, Greg Zerline. A 33-yarder from the left hash. Zerline's kick is up and through, and they take a 17-14 lead. So they get the turnover in plus territory. The drive stalls out, but still able to get three out of that. Yeah, we were able to see an offense and a defense kind of mix and match with each other, didn't we? Both of them trying to make sure that they had the upper hand and the advantage. Offense trying to get to the end zone. Defense, of course, trying to hold them to a field goal attempt. And it wasn't a guaranteed lock three from where they started. So, you know, the offense has to be happy to come away with those three points. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. And that one too wide and incomplete. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far, but on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. He'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. So they will take the sack instead of the penalty. And it takes another down off the series. But the biggest one of all, do you want to tell the guy who just got the sack that it no longer counts? No. No, not at all. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they talk it over, we step aside. On fourth down, on is Corey Bohorquez to punt. Fielded at about the 28. 
A very good punt, but a 16-yard return. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Jets going to take over now late in this first half. And with great starting field position and a couple of timeouts at their disposal, they'll certainly have the green light here. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10 at the 45. Wilson's throw into the hands of Cobb. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Now it's Wilson. Flushed out right. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Miles Garrett, his second sack of the night. Now you've been around me a long time now. You know on second and inches. I love it when teams are aggressive and take a shot, but we just saw the downside to being that aggressive, didn't we? Now you've given up on a pretty likely first down if they had run the football and they need to come up with something here on third. still to go third down now now Wilson steps away to his Wilson hit it's loose it's out fumble and I think the Browns got it they did and that play just looked a little helter skelter from the start and that's the risk as a quarterback once you take off with that football you might fumble it and he did and he was going for the reward which is gaining yardage breaking down a defense but you're right about the risk always lurking out there someone always trying to get to the football try to find a place to cover up and slide and protect what you've earned they've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 41 yard line so the fumble recovery now Flacco to throw looking for Cooper that's complete and he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory First and 10 here for Flacco. Finding more on the out route for the completion. Now he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. A 14-yard pickup. That's 14 yards on two straight plays. Now how about this throw right here? Had to throw it to the left sideline, and you know the timing's got to be correct on this one. Ball's got to be right where it needs to be, and it was. That's because he had great arm strength on that one, able to drive the football. Quarterbacks love it when they can show off their arms. And his kick is good. Didn't hit it all that well, but he got enough on it to put it through. And that will tie things at 17-all. So they wind up turning the turnover into points as they convert there for three. Yeah, that was a nice job there to force the fumble. They recover, hand things over to their offense, and then the offense went down and got them three. That alone, that's not enough to win a game, but both units able to do their jobs on these last two drives. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. So thanks to the late field goal, we are all tied up heading to intermission. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you too in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in and we have not been disappointed but they are all even to this point. So to see if either side can pull away, 
Let's get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the start of the second half. Okay, Coach. Yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. started for the second half it was an even first half all tied on the scoreboard and they will wrangle it down a couple yards shy of the 30. Now the Jets going to take over on offense to begin this third quarter this offense ready for the first drive of the third quarter. Well, quarters number one and two entertaining. We saw some good offense points put up, Charles, and all tied on the scoreboard. And it sets us up for what could be a really fun second half because we've seen both sides score almost at will here in the first half. And now here in the second half, getting the ball first, you've got to think, hey, we can go out and really run our offense the way we did in the first half. But if I'm a defensive player, all I'm thinking is, can I make a play to really help out my team and break this streak of offense? So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Wilson lets it fly deep for Cobb. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and 10. From the shotgun, Wilson. That's complete to Lazard. And he'll get this one down to about the 20 yard line. He continues to deliver a first down here. He had four catches in the first half, and this one, number five. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play. Never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field, and here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. Flush to his right. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. Multiple players getting home for the one-yard sack. He was really focused downfield, but there was really no viable options. The coverage was too good. And the defense really quickened the tempo of that play with their pass rush because there was nowhere for him to go with the football. The only place he ended up, down on the ground. Sack here, second and 11. They'll give to Hall. And this will be a gain of six when it's all said and done. Down to the 15 from the 21. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. He's got his target. That's complete. And the Jets are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And that could be one of those turning point plays in a ball game. A field goal gets you the lead here, but they want to make a statement and get six points. And they're certainly going to get that opportunity as they get the conversion and set up first and goal. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. 
It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. Second and goal from the six this time. And they'll go again with a band of Canada. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. Well, the spotlight hit him once already tonight as he got into the end zone. He was trying to make it a double spotlight, wasn't he? A credit to defense, bottling him up, not letting him get in for the second score there. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. They're going to run this with a tight end. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. C.J. Uzama, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Jets have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. Now Zerline on and the extra point. And they will take a seven-point lead now. So that drive takes them down the field in eight plays. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. Well, Charles, you and I said in intermission, feels like we're set up for a good second half. Well, the other side scored, and now it's up to them to answer. How do they respond here with their first drive of the second half? Well, bottom line is they just saw the ball go in the end zone against their defense, and they saw what good offense looks like. They believe they've got a good offense as well. From the best plays you've got to the top performers you have, they try to move that ball down the field for an answering score. I don't know what this says about me, but I love successful runs up the middle when the blocking is so well executed like that. And it doesn't matter whether it's zone blocking, whether it's a power scheme, when you have a blocker on a defender and then the running back can read it, find the proper hole, and just go, it's sometimes a thing of beauty. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now it's Flacco. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Now Flacco. And the Jets pressure too much as down he goes. John Franklin Myers bringing the pressure yet again. That's his third sack here tonight. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Six 
The Jets will bring in a nickel set as they try to stop this third down. Flacco from the gun. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. The Browns send out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. That'll be a 41-yard punt, just one yard on the return. And they will take over first and 10. And New York set to take the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out, looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Brandon, you're a big lover of music. How about what you just saw there? This is what I call playing the piano for a defensive lineman, the ability to move laterally up and down the line of scrimmage. How about the way he just flowed and got to the outside part of the field and made that play? So from the 37, here's a second and nine. To throw is Wilson. That's complete to Cobb. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. Here's third and a few inches. On the ground, it's Banacanda. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. Brandon, they're still in the lead, but momentum's certainly been going the opposite direction. So to me, that's a really important pickup there on third down. Try and regain some confidence, and you're right. They need to stem the tide a little bit. That certainly helped. First and 10, it's Wilson. He finds his man complete. It's Wilson. And he's brought down. 10 yards is the pickup. Good enough for a Jet first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Play action. Now Wilson. He finds his man complete. That's Wilson. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. From the gun, it's Wilson. And his throw here is incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. On the throw led him too much that time. It's incomplete. That play call wasn't there for them against that coverage. So they're going to spin the dial now in their playbook and come up with one more shot at the marker to try and keep this series going. 
This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Throwing again here, Wilson. He gets it underneath to Hall. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. That's a letdown defensively because they had him stacked up third and long, and you know their thought process had to be just make the tackle in front of the sticks and force the three. Instead, they allowed him room to run, and now they're facing first and goal, looking to regroup. It looks like a jumbo set with three tight ends here for first and goal. Again, he'll drop to throw. To the back of the end zone, but too high. Over everybody and incomplete. Yeah, very smart play right there. Pocket collapsing around him. Love the way he moved around a little bit and avoided the sack. A line of scrimmage once again the five as they get ready for second and goal. They'll bring a tight end in motion. A handoff for Hall. And he'll get this one back to the five-yard line, but no further than that. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. Partner, has been my experience that after two stops like that near the goal line, Defense has only become bolder. They don't back off at all. I think they continue to bring pressure and force them to make a really big play against them. Had the incompletion, then the run for no gain. Let's see now. On third and goal, Wilson. Now throw right side here, going to be incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. So Wilson runs off, and now they will go to the man they call Greg the Leg, Greg Zerline. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. Zerline's kick is up and through, and that will extend their lead even further. So a nice kick there as they are able to add on to their lead. And that's exactly what you're looking to do. Maneuver yourself into range. That way, if your drive stalls out, you're able to get something out of it. And they do so right there. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. Another opportunity now for the Browns' offense. And these guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to spring together a nice drive and help themselves out. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. Setting up to throw Flacco. He's got Njoku, his big tight end. So the completion good for six yards, and that'll bring up second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. This second and four. From the gun, Flacco. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. I'm darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. 
This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Flacco will take to the air again. Throw out wide is incomplete. There's a quarterback who's learned his lesson. He's thrown a few interceptions so far. That time he said, I'm making sure nobody catches this one. The Browns send out their punter now as he's on here to punt it away. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And did he put that on a dime? He did. Wow. Out of bounds at the one-yard line. We're certainly not going to see a better punt than that. Definitely taking a chance because if that thing clips the pylon, it comes out to the 20, but instead it goes out of bounds at the one-yard line. Back on offense, New York gets set to take over. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. Well, thanks for joining us here on a Thursday night in the NFL. Third quarter, second and ten coming up. Here's a Banacanda. And he gets it up to the ten-yard line here. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance and guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. And that went off the mark, a little late with a throw. Partner, the way this offense has marched up and down the field during this game, it's almost a surprise to see an incomplete pass on third down, isn't it? Yeah, they have had their foot on the gas all game long, but here finally stalling out. Here's Thomas Morstead now, as he's on to punt for New York. Here's more on the return. A oh, heck of a move. Man, 44-yard punt, return of nine. And the Browns have a short field in front of them now as they take over first and ten. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and ten. Throwing here on first down. Flacco. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Now second and five. Flacco. Over the middle, Amari Cooper, it's complete. And he's taken down inside the 30. They call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. First down, Flacco. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. Third quarter action. Appreciate you joining us from Cleveland, Ohio. Second and ten. They run with Ford, gets around him, and he's going to get this down close to a first at about the Jets' 19-yard line. 63 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling him in the huddle right now. 
So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Third and just one, it's Flacco. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And the Browns are going to have a first and goal coming up as they find a way to convert there on third and one. And this is an offense in need of getting a few good things to happen. Here's one right here. They've had their share of struggles in key moments, but that's a nice throw and nice work after the throw. And they're set up now with a first and goal. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Here's a give up the middle, and he'll take this from the nine down to about the seven. Not a whole lot there on first and goal, and that's what you're looking for defensively. You'll certainly live with giving up just a yard or two in this situation. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. Now Flacco. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Elijah Moore, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Browns are able to get a score back in the final stages of this third quarter. Well, you know, you can't get all the points back at once, but baby steps a good start. A start that was sorely needed because this team looked like they might be out of this one, but getting a touchdown, getting back into it, gives them hope as they move forward. Now it's Hopkins to add the extra point. And the lead is down to a field goal now. So that drives seven plays in length. And it was finished off by Elijah Moore on the touchdown reception. Touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. The New York offense taking over for their next possession. Their lead down to a field goal now as they start with a first and 10. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we're back now here in Cleveland. Second down and four. Hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. And he'll push forward for a couple to the 34. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Here's third and three. They'll run with Hall. And the broken tackle helps lead to a first down game. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. I know we're the era of wide open football, a lot of spread formations, more space, but there's still a spot for power football. We just saw some of it right there. How about that run? Yeah, breaking the tackle, and you know, late in this game, he wants a football in his hands. He's had a good day. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now they'll throw it with Wilson. 
And this nearly an interception, but it's incomplete. A well, turnover really would have helped him there, but not to be. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. So line of scrimmage still the 39 on second and 10. Throwing is Wilson. They'll set up the screen for Hall. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. It'll go as a gain of 11 and a Jets first down. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. Rucker hauling it in on the out route. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Wilson will throw again. He finds his man complete. That's Hall. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Here's a give to Hall. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula, just keep the ball on the ground, keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage, but stay in bounds and let that clock tick. All again on second down. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. 69 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 16 times. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Normally, being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. Wilson. Open man here is Conklin. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short. So it'll be third and less than a yard. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. And that is incomplete. Nice call by the defense there on third down. Just flood the field with extra defensive backs in their dime package. Nowhere to go with the football. Forces the incompletion. And here's a big one now. Trying to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll try and throw for it with Wilson. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Jets try it, but the fourth down play doesn't work. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. So that's a decision that could loom pretty large here. They go for it on fourth down, but come up empty. But I actually like the call, and the reason? It shows me a head coach has faith in his team overall. First on the offensive side, thinking they can pick it up but also knowing that he has faith in his defense that if they don't, they'll go out there and stop him. I like the confidence he showed. Now a quick slant as the throw's complete, and he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 
That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. That's a nice throw there, and he's obviously feeling pretty good because remember, he had a touchdown pass on the last drive, and here he comes out throwing again, and they wind up getting good yardage and a first down right out of the gate. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. To pass, Flacco. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked off by the linebacker, C.J. Mosley. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six and a jet touchdown. Well, what a game this has turned out to be for him. Remember, C.D., he had the turnover earlier, and now the pick six, that's the cherry on top. You're absolutely right about that, partner. When you force a turnover on defense, you're the guy most excited about getting back out there and trying to force another one. How about him picking off that pass, setting his sights on the end zone? You know he wasn't going to be denied getting there either. Zerline good with a PAT. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. Amari Cooper and the rest of the offense heading back out there now. They have to like what they've gotten from him in this game. Think about the accumulation of catches. Eight. The yards per catch now, because you're getting more than a first down every time he's touching the ball. This is the kind of game you want when you're able to throw it out wide. Absolutely. Over 100 yards, has the eight catches. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Here's second and seven. Flacco. He'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. John Franklin Myers make that now four sacks for him in tonight's ball game. Remember throughout my career here in defensive coaches always say, guys, you've got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. to this drive you had the sack now the false start I mean it doesn't take much to either read lips or just imagine what the head coach is saying right now get your head in the game guys let's go tries the right side and he finds Bell so the completion results there in nine yards and that's going to bring up a fourth down so much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute isn't it guard the first down sticks don't let them get there and they rallied and made the tackle send out their punter now as the drive goes backwards so he's on to punt it away nifty move now, a nice job on the return there 16 yards and the Jets will take over the New York set to take the field now there are two scores on the plus side still time here in this fourth quarter but 
maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. So give him two yards there on the completion, and that will bring up second down. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. From the 44-yard line, here's second down and eight. Now Wilson. And he's got it. Got his man on the end round. Complete. A gain of 10 as they look to add on to this 10-point lead. The passing game continues to be their friend. Even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles, they're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. Did he continue to throw these safe passes? Who can blame him? Straight ahead is Hall. 75 yards rushing for him now to this point. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Ball again on second down. And this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Meanwhile, Wilson's throw into the hands of Cobb. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. Here's Wilson. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. I think you have to chalk that one up for the defense there. Someone right on the spot. Excellent coverage. Didn't leave him enough room to come down inbounds, even though he did catch the football. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. There's Wilson to throw. Uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time to have a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. So on now is Greg Zerline in a pressure situation. From the left hash mark, this a 43-yard attempt. Zerline's kick is up and through, and that will extend their lead even further. So that may be not a knockout blow, but I, I suppose certainly every little bit helps when you're trying to salt one away in the fourth. Well, the possibility of being beaten by two late touchdowns or at least sent to overtime does exist, but time, definitely a big factor at this stage of the game, is in their favor. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Browns offense heading back out to take possession. 
And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. And now here is another interception. Picked up by D.J. Reed. And they will set up shop in enemy territory at the 42-yard line. Well, there's two sides to this coin. I mean, on one side, five interceptions now thrown for him. That's tough. But, man, this defense, they have been ball hawking and impressive. But, Charles, let's flip it back over. If you're coaching a quarterback that's struggling this much at this stage of the game, do you maybe try to get him out? I would think about it, and I think about it awfully hard. But also, you might want to look into his eyes, see what he has. He might be one of those players that you don't want to affect his confidence by actually pulling him out of the game. So you have to know your player. You have to know the situation. Second down and eight. Now it's Wilson. Over the middle complete and he's going to get this inside the 30. They call his number again it's his sixth catch and a first down. Well normally you might say start running the football you've got the lead here in the fourth quarter but the way that they've passed it with such success I don't know maybe keep throwing it. Yeah I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom right in this stage of the game you would think you would switch to a running attack but you're exactly right they've thrown it so well throughout the game and trusting this quarterback, I think he continued to do so. 93 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Well, at this stage, that's exactly what you want offensively. Good run on first down, stay in bounds, keep that clock rolling. And look at that play chart that the play caller has in his hands right now. That's what you got to focus in on because that's divided up by sections. And right now, he's looking at that four-minute offense section. What running plays do we have to bleed down the clock and take care of the football? Right now, they're executing really well. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. That'll put him at 66 receiving yards now for the game. And he's got a first down. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. And they got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Down under two minutes to go in this football game. So it's Jets football as we get you reset here. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. Second and six with the ball on the seven. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. And whistles, and we're going to have another stoppage of play as they call the timeout on defense with 1.53 left. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Here's Wilson to the goal line, but it's incomplete. How about this defense? They came up with a couple big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. So Wilson runs off, and now they will go to the man they call Greg the Leg, Greg Zerline. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. Zerline's kick is up and through, and that will extend their lead even further. So that, not just important in the fact that it widens their lead, but really that was a textbook job of just hanging on to the football. And we know all the time that coaches talk about time of possession. Sometimes it's a stat that doesn't matter much, but in this drive, it matters a lot. They want to reduce time and score points and lock this game down. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. On the return, here's Jerome Ford. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Yeah. 
Flacco set to lead this offense. Down by 16, just over a minute 40 to play. Somehow they need to come up with a pair of touchdowns and two two-point conversions. Now Flacco. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Well, we've talked about it, CD, but it bears repeating. They are struggling to throw the football. All the interceptions and more incompletions. It just doesn't look like things are in sync out there. I would agree with that, and it's not a good day when you feel like an incomplete pass. It's almost a win for you because it wasn't intercepted. And I think the receivers now, when they're running their routes, they want to catch the ball, but they also want to make sure that the defenders don't take it away. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. An important one here, no doubt. Third and four. Flacco. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Brandon, a lot of times you'll see running backs rotate in and out of the game, whether it's a completed pass, a good run, it doesn't matter. Here, not only does he stay in, but they go right back to him, and he makes another nice play, back-to-back -back catches. One timeout at their disposal, but more pressing is the need for two scores, obviously. Here's first and ten. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Here's second down. And again, it's Flacco to throw. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. This is certainly a team that has proven it likes to target its backs through the air and defensively. They were aware of that and certainly were prepared on that throw. This definitely four down territory at this point, but a critical third down here. Here's Flacco. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And that's gonna be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets 34 yard line. But the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. Here's first and ten. Here we go. Tiny is Ringo. Tiny is on Ringo. Tiny is on Ringo. Four down. Once more, it's Flacco. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Ford. And they'll get this one to about the 20 yard line. defense walks off the field they can do so with their heads held high what a performance well by the offense too i mean really charles just complete domination on both sides of the football here in this one certainly was and i think both sides compete against each other all the time you go to each other in practice obviously your training camps your off season but on game day you both want to show your best and i think that's what we saw from both the offense and the defense a complete team victory So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we say good night from Cleveland.